Okay, live outside Queens Park now, Rebecca Thompson, who's been in Queens, been in lockup, I should say, all day at the legislature. So, Rebecca, take it away. Give us some of the highlights or lowlights, as Ontarians might be calling them today. Well, absolutely, Karen. What we've been hearing, of course, is that this is not an austerity budget. I think that's the main message. What we're seeing is that in the next two years, for example, uh, the debt level in Ontario is going to be going up by, get this, $40 billion. In addition to that, what they projected to be the deficit this year, which is $9.8 billion, what we've seen in the budget speech is that for this next fiscal year, it's actually going to go to $11.7 billion. So the big question is, is if the deficit is going up based on what what the Minister of Finance has said in his speech. Now, in addition to that, total government spending will be going up by $3.5 in two years. I'll mention three areas, for example, health and education are two areas that are going to be going up. Uh, we've heard, for example, from the Don Drummond report that these two areas should have been going down. But the fastest growing area is the interest being paid on the debt. In fact, $12.2 billion in two years is a huge amount. Now, this is, of course, as I say, not an austerity budget, but what the Ontario Liberals are achieving in this budget is, uh, is, of course, as you mentioned earlier, is laying out the NDP plan. Now, as you just mentioned, Karen, there is a, numbers of a number of policies uh, that we already know the Liberals were moving on. For example, uh, guaranteed auto insurance cuts, as well as uh, as well as uh, almost $300 million over two years for youth employment initiatives, a 1% increase also in social uh, assistance. So what this means is that the Ontario Liberals are moving on a yet another 1% increase in, the, in last year's budget. They also increased uh, welfare by 1%. They're also topping up welfare uh, for single adults who don't uh, have any children. In addition to that, they're loosening the rules on exactly who qualifies uh, for welfare. Now, we've also heard the Ontario Liberals today outline a massive new uh, infrastructure and transit plan. They plan to spend $35 billion over three years. This includes wide highways including the 401 it also includes introducing um, high occupants vehicle toll lanes these will uh, coincide with the existing uh, lanes that people can uh, drive on also there's infrastructure spending for schools 3.6 billion for schools including building new classrooms to accommodate full uh, full day kindergarten but it was really like playing where's Waldo looking through the budget today in terms of exactly what the new revenue tools will be are going to be we're seeing uh, these new spending commitments, but it was very difficult to actually see in this budget, in this gigantic book of uh, budget items, exactly what revenue tools there are going to be. For example, uh, funding infrastructure, uh, it wasn't very clear what the new revel to revenue tools are going to be. The government is committing to identifying new revenue tools. For example, the high occupancy uh, toll lanes are one idea that they're looking into, but uh, beyond that, it was very difficult to identify, and of course, we asked the question uh, the uh, media had the chance to ask Finance Minister Charles Sousa uh, questions and we asked him uh, specifically where the revenue tools are and uh, the government is committing to finding these new revenue tools. Now when it comes to growing the economy uh, one in interesting thing is that uh, payroll taxes are going down for small businesses but they are going up for large corporations so there was a question and a concern among the Ontario Progressive Conservatives for example in the media uh, law up uh, about how exactly uh, the Ontario Liberals are going to help grow the economy. Now, they all, the Ontario Progressive Conservatives are also concerned, uh, Karen, about the fact that there isn't really a jobs plan. There is a youth employment strategy, uh, which they did, which the Ontario Tories commended. Uh, but when it comes to other types of jobs, for example, in manufacturing, uh, the Ontario Progressive Conservatives have been very critical. Now, the NDP, of course, does say that this budget reflects their plan, uh, but they don't. But the Ontario Liberals don't go far enough in finding deficit uh, reduction measures. So it was interesting to hear what the NDP and Andrea Horvath uh, had to say today, Karen, uh, specifically about holding the Ontario government accountable uh, for implementing all of these ideas that the NDP have put forward in a number of months. Now, the Ontario Liberal budget includes hundreds and millions of dollars worth of commitments that the NDP uh, laid out. But Andrea Horvath uh, wouldn't commit to, uh, to supporting this budget. Um, and she says that 
that she wants the Ontario Liberals to be held accountable for implementing her ideas as well as being accountable to uh, to Ontarians when it comes to exa for example uh, cancelling gas plants and all sorts of other types of, uh, of uh, scandals that the Ontario Liberals have faced over uh, the past number of years. But the great big question of course is uh, will this lead ultimately to an election? Will it lead to a change in government? Uh, are the people of Ontario going to accept this budget and will the with the NDP who of course hold the Trump card uh, in uh, in this budget vote will they vote for the budget or will they vote it down so that's what we've been learning today um, and uh, and as we and we'll probably hear much more analysis of course in the next hour uh, uh, Karen as uh, as we um, as we proceed well you've certainly learned a lot and I appreciate that rundown there's a lot of information in that budget blueprint and you've certainly gone through it for us and like Ian said the devil is in the details and I guess if there's one takeaway from all of what you've just now reported it's that we don't know where the money is coming from to cover all of these promises and all of these commitments. No, that's exactly right. That's the question asked uh, to the finance minister, as well as when we looked through this entire budget document, which is, you know, a detailed, almost 300-page document uh, about how uh, the government, what the government is is um, is moving forward on with regards to its fiscal blueprint. There really aren't any concrete and immediate revenue tools to pay for all mm -hmm. of this new spending, and this is the big challenge. This is exactly what the Ontario Progressive Conservatives, as well as the NDP have pointed out as being a big concern. All right, Rebecca Thompson reporting live for us outside the legislature in Ontario. Appreciate that, Rebecca. Thank you. It's been a long